we're going to talk about how to calibrate your burette. So say you had some really bad burette where when you dispense from 0 to 10, it only delivered 9.8 milliliters. When you dispensed from 10 to 20, it only delivered 10.2 milliliters. When you dispensed from 20 to 30, it, it well, pretty good there, delivered 10, and so on and so forth. So what do you do about such a burette? Okay. The lab stipulates that you dispense these different volumes and weigh the water that comes out and calculate a correction from that. And so the correction looks like this. So say you dispense from 0 to 10 milliliters at 22C. Now you have the mass that you weighed out. This number I have right here is actually the difference so you weigh the flask, you put the water in, you cap it, you weigh it again, subtract, this is the difference. And you multiply by the number that we give you that's in the table. And so this provided table has uh, several columns in it. You want the volume of one gram of water that includes buoyancy, so it's an adjustment to the measured mass due to the fact that things float in air. Not very well, but they float a little bit and we don't want the temperature corrected for different expansion and contraction of glass. So we just want the one that says at temperature shown and not converted to a different temperature. All right, so you put that number in. Do keep in mind this number is backwards. It's not density. I shouldn't say it's backwards. It's an inverted density. And so you have milliliters per gram. So all you need to do is just multiply that thing. And then this is the volume of water that you actually dispensed at this temperature um, when you went from 0 to 10 mils. And to calculate the correction from that, okay, you need to do, take the actual volume dispense and subtract the burette reading difference from it. And that's the order. You want actual minus what it should have been. Because that way, if you dispense less than you think you did, you get a negative correction. If you dispense more than you thought you should have, then you get a positive correction. And that kind of makes sense. Okay, when we calculate the correction, this just comes right over here. And this is the volume of water we actually dispense from the mass. And then you subtract from it your burette reading. Use your actual reading. You might not have dispensed 10.00, you probably dispensed something close to that, so use whatever that number is. And then you get your correction. Mine's negative because we dispensed less than we thought we should have. Okay, so then the lab stipulates that you do it again. So here's the math doing it again. Say we have a second trial, slightly different mass of water. You do the same thing with it, calculate the same correction. This time I'm assuming that I dispensed a little less than 10, 9.99, because this is from the actual burette readings. And I get my new correction for the second trial. And then you take your average correction, and that's what you have for this uh, part of the burette, between 0 and 10. So you can do this for the different ranges. And... Here we get into an interesting question of whether you calculate it for each range versus whether you calculate it cumulatively, right? So based on what we have up above for the amount delivered differences that I say we have with this burette I made up, here's the correction for each range. If you start at 10, go to 20, here's your correction right here. If you start at 30, go to 40, here's the correction for just that range. Now when we wind up using these numbers to adjust a titration, we're going to need to find a cumulative correction. And so you can do this two ways. One, you could take the mass of your empty flask and the mass after you've put 30 mils into it and subtract to get the mass of 30 mils of water. Use the correction to find the volume of that water. Use that number from the table. And then subtract from that the difference in your burette reading at 0 and at 30, and then that gives you the cumulative one. Or if you did it like, kind of like I did it and conceived of it in my head, you take these numbers for each range. This is 30 to 40. Here's the correction for it. And then you basically just add all your corrections up as you go down the burette, and then you calculate kind of a cumulative number. So here's me adding them all together. This is just 
addition. That's all that is. All right, so I add them all together and I get these cumulative corrections. Now, this is what you need to plot. And you're instructed to make a plot that looks something like this. Yours will look prettier because it'll be in Excel. And your first point is zero. Then you have your cumulative correction all the way down. Now, a little nuance, right? So say when you have your two trials, um, maybe, maybe here you measure 19.8 mils, and the second time it's 20.2 mils. Um, what's the volume for that actual correction? Eh, just call it 20, right? We're only using five points to correct a burette. It's not the most precise correction. It gets us better than nothing, um, but it's like we can just say 20 for that, and that's okay. This is what you have for the calibration lab. Okay, you're done with that. Then you move on to, um, this is the same plot, I just copied it down here. Then you move on to later for a different lab needing to correct the titration data to give you a slightly more accurate number for volume dispensed. And so we have this handy dandy calibration plot that we made in a previous lab, in the first lab. And then, okay, how do we apply these corrections to titration data? So I have two scenarios here, one and two. So let's say the first scenario, say you started right at zero and you ended at 40. This one's pretty straightforward. Um, zero doesn't really have an adjustment, so whatever. Um, so you're still at zero. And then uh, 40 milliliters does have an adjustment. You can pull it off the chart or you can use your data up here. Okay, 40 milliliters, my cumulative adjustment is 0.105. And then, all right, so you it's positive, you add 0.105 to it, and then here's your final volume. And then for this titration, when you want to find the amount dispensed, it's just 40.11 minus zero. So this would be your amount dispensed, that's the calibrated answer. Now a different scenario, so now I'm down here in number two, say you started at 15 and ended at 45. Well, we don't have um, data for this precisely, we don't have the calibration at 15. So what we need to do is we need to um, just interpolate, right? You can do this mathematically if you want. I'm fine if you just estimate it off the graph. It seems weird to estimate when we're trying to do this crazy precision thing, but um, you should have calibrated it at every milliliter if you really wanted to do it right. And we didn't, because that would take forever. So we'll do the best we can with what we have. So 15 milliliters, all right. Um, I'm just going to say 15 right here, boop. And then this happens to be about, well, I mean, it's about 0.1. It's a little lower than 0.1 because I didn't draw my graph pretty. Um, I actually interpret, interpolated it because 15 is right between 10 and 20. I just averaged these two cumulative corrections to give me a value here. It comes out to be 0.1 um, mils. Then for 45, what's the correction at 45? This one is going to land about here. If you pull that over, it's oh, it's about 0.05. Um, again, yours will be much better because it's actually on Excel. I interpolated this and kind of did the math to figure out that it should be about 0.05. So you adjust your first number, your starting volume with that correction factor, and then have your new starting volume. Then you have your end and your new ending volume. And then for this titration, Right, ultimately you care about the amount that's dispensed, so you just subtract these two numbers here, and you get your corrected volume dispensed, and this is the number that you're going to use in your titration experiment to then actually you know, do whatever math you have with that. Alright, and so that is how to apply the corrections to titration data. Thanks for watching.